All right, guys, how's it going? Bizwax here, coming back at you with the best theories. I know you guys been wanting it, and I'm back. We had some delays because of COVID, but I'm here now, and we're going to have the best theories out here. I mean, I don't know. I really know shouldn't be calling them theories because, I mean, most of the stuff I say comes true. What can I say? So, let's just dive right in, shall we? So, the first theory I got coming out is coming from the motion picture A Bronx Tale. A lot of you may have heard it. But a lot of you guys just don't know the hidden meanings in this film. <laughs> now, now, this whole movie takes place in the Bronx, hence the name Bronx Tale. So that's a given right there, okay? You're welcome on that one. So, the rest of the movie takes place with this kid named Colosino. Col Colosino, yeah. Colosino is like a little kid, right? And he just wants to like be like part of the cool mafia crew from this guy named Sonny. You know? So... He wants to imitate him and, you know, he grows up idolizing him, but his dad's a bus driver, you know, Colosino's like, bus driver? <laughs> bus driver? Like, working man's a sucker, you know? So let's just dive right into the movie theory, right? Okay, so, like I said, these aren't really theories, these are mostly just facts. And you may not have known this about a Bronx Tale, for as long as it's been out, you guys probably would have put these two pieces together. Now, I'm gonna drop a huge bombshell right now, just for you folks, okay? Sonny is gay. Yeah. Yeah. Shocker, right? Yeah. Okay. But not really, though. Not really. If you, if you watch the movie carefully, if you watch the movie really carefully, okay, you will notice these, not even so much subtle, because it's just so obvious. Just smack balls in your face. Like, that kind of obvious, okay? So, it's pretty simple, right? Like, Sonny... You get first introduced to him as Colosino's, like, idol on the streets, right? And his dad doesn't like it too much. I wonder why. Yeah, yeah. I think his dad kind of has a gaydar going here, right? So anyways, so Colosino sees him shooting some dude. And in his head, it's like, oh, it's all over a parking spot. Parking spot. Yeah, right. More like you're parking in the back entrance, Sonny. Yeah, you know what I mean? So the whole point of it wasn't for the parking spot. So this, like, dude that, like, drives up and bashing this one dude's car, right? And it's like, you know, you're like, whoa, whoa, we just we got some beef, right? Well, no, actually, the guy himself had some inside knowledge that Sonny was gay, right? So the dude that was actually in the car was Sonny's secret lover. Yeah, 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 it's a secret lover. Also played by Joe Pesci, which is very great, right? I mean, just look at him, right? Yeah, gay. Anyways, so... That's actually a secret lover, and he's actually coming there, and he's all like, oh, you know, you faggot, get out of my neighborhood, oh, you're bashing with the, with the bat. And Sonny's like, oh, my God, my, my boyfriend's about to get hurt. Pow! You know? He just, pow, kills the dude that's trying to get at him. He's like, oh, bro, hey, you, you got to get out of here now, you know? Like, let's get this guy in the car, get him to safety, and get him out of here. But you don't see that dude for the rest of the movie. And there's a reason for that. Sonny was like, you know, I can't let everyone know that, like, I'm gay, right? So he tells me, you know, you gotta you gotta lay low for a bit. You gotta go over here. You know, I'll visit you on weekends. You know, we'll have visitations and all that. And we'll do, well, you know, gay stuff. So anyway, so the whole movie progresses on, and you know, Colosino sees this, and he doesn't rat on him, of course, because it's sunny, and he doesn't want to be no rat. You know, he's not a rat, and his dad doesn't like it um, because he did a good thing for a bad man, and he learns later on what the bad man part meant. Just more like he did a good thing for a more like a you know a fag man, if I'm right. So anyways, this movie, like, progresses on, and, like, you see Colosino, like, growing up alongside Sonny, because, you know, he, you know, Sonny takes him under his wing, his, his gay wings, really, he takes him under it, you know. So anyways, he, he grows up alongside Sonny, and, you know, you know Robert De Niro, you know, uh, you know Colosino's dad, he, he's not really liking it, you know, and he sees a lot of changes in, uh, in his son, and it's, it's, not, it's not nice, you know, and it's blatantly obvious, too, I mean... The movie just flat out like shows how Sonny's having an effect on Colosino, and it's not in the ways you think. It's not in the ways of, oh man, he must be a tough guy. No, uh, he's getting kind of gay, and uh, his dad does not like in what he sees. Yeah, okay. I mean, just take this clip for instance. Um, Colosino just casually running down the street. Fucking dead when I catch you, you piece of shit. Say yeah, what straight man runs like that? None, okay? <laughs> that run had gay all over it, all right? I mean, just look the way he just waddles about. Look at him. Oh, 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 you better get back here. 
you know, and then you see you see Sonny just like, hey, kid, get back here. He's like, oh, why? He goes, come on, man, get back here, man. I'm trying to let everyone know that, I'm, you know, I'm turning you gay, you know, but, you know, yeah, his dad knows it and doesn't like it, so that's basically, like, the underlying tone of the whole movie of just, you know, him being gay. And, you know, it's, like, pretty obvious, you know, when you really think about it, especially it all comes together in that final scene of the movie, you know, when he's, uh, he's at, oh, spoiler alert, he's at Sonny's funeral. Uh, there's a lot of flowers around. Yeah, I wonder why. Uh, they say it's some. They say it's some Italian thing, but I don't know what Italians that bring all those flowers. I'm pretty sure Sonny was like, "Hey guys, uh, I, when I die, I'll make sure you have a lot of flowers around me." <laughs> Gay. So, anyways, the guy, his former ex-lover, ends up coming up to Colosio while he's grieving over Sonny. Um, he's standing there over his gay body, and he's uh, and he's you know visibly emotional. And then you know, as all gay men do, they like to coddle people who are really emotional. So here comes Joe Pesci. Coming into the scene, and he tell you know, he tells the kid, "Oh, you remember me, right?" And, and you know, you, you guys seen the movie. He's like, "Yo, you remember me? Uh, I was that one guy there." And then this is really what ties the whole scene together. When Colosio asks him, he's like, "Was that really over a parking spot?" And this is where Joe Pesci is like, just has all these gay flashbacks, and he just like must be thinking of all these times him and Sonny just got it on, and it just tone changes. He just tells him straight out, "No," you know, because. <laughs> We all know what that was really about, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's a Bronx tale, you know what I mean? So and they might as well have called it a fag's tale, really. <laughs> because of, you know, that's like it's gay. So anyways, guys, so that was a Bronx tale. So the next theory I got, which isn't really a theory, is more of me just pointing out the blatantly obvious. And that is on one of your beloved TV shows you love, love so much on Disney+. Plus. I think I know what I'm talking about. We're talking about The Mandalorian. Uh-huh. Okay, which I hate to break you guys is just one big ripoff. How? Of what? You're asking? Yeah. Okay, let me see. Mandalorian comes from what Lucas films, right? Based on Star Wars. And I guess you guys don't know of another uh, film that George Lucas made. And it's actually, uh, it's titled Willow. Now for everyone who's seen Willow, I think you know where I'm going with this. Okay. Mandalorian and Willow. Let's see what just some of the things they have slightly in common, which is basically the entire premise of both film and series. Okay? Now, in Willow, you see Willow Wapgood, you know, he's doing his own thing. He has his own, like, missions of where he wants to be a sorcerer and, you know, he has his farm, his family, whatever. Basically, you have, put it this way, you have a male who's living his own life until out of nowhere, what happens? A baby comes into the picture, and he finds this child. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a child in Willow, right? So he finds this child, and he just washes up on shore, and he doesn't know what to do with it. And at first, he's all like, whatever, I'll just give up this child. Sound familiar, right? He's like, I'll just give up this child and just send it on its own way. But then eventually, he finds out this child is special. Sound familiar? So, he finds out this child special, so what does he do? He takes it upon himself to go return his child with... His own people. Sound familiar? So, Willow ends up going on an adventure to return this child. And again, he goes and meets Mad Mardigan. Now, I don't know if you've seen the comparisons already. But let's go ahead and stop there and let's focus on the Mandalorian. Now, what is the Mandalorian about? It's about a bounty hunter who takes on a bounty. And which is to find a child. So... He finds the said child, and then is like, alright, I'm just going to give it up. I don't care, it's a bounty. Until he finds out the child is special. Wow. Wow. Original. Original plot so far. Finds out the child is special, and they tell him they'll take it to someone of its own kind. Original ideas. So he goes, and he's like, oh, I'm going to go return the child to its original kind. But what happens? He has to run into some, you know, runs into some people, and some people he doesn't know, specifically... A girl named Cara Dune, okay, and this kind of basically parallels with Willow, okay, you're going to tell me Cara Dune isn't just Mad Mortigan as a woman? You don't think those are the same people? Okay, how about now? Uncanny, uncanny, the exact same person, honestly, like, it's right in your face, like, they got so lazy with this writing of the Mandalorian, they're just like, Oh, we want to make a Star Wars movie about a bounty hunter. It's kind of like Boba Fett. You guys have any ideas? 
They're like, no. And then he's like, well, we're kind of just doing this whole George Lucas thing. Has he made any other movies? Um, he made something called Willow. Well, let's just take that story and put it on here. And that's exactly what happened. And now you can never watch Mandalorian again the same, knowing that it's just a ripoff of Willow. It's just one big ripoff. So anyways, guys, yeah, it's me, Bithwax. Hope you guys liked the video. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, you know, do all that. Now, I want to have a little shout out to a guy out there that's been calling me out recently on YouTube. His name's Freddy's Reviews. I don't know if you guys seen him. You probably haven't. No one really has. And one of the main reasons why is he posts videos and he just makes them private. Like, why are you going to make videos if you're just going to have them private? It's kind of a waste of time. Anyways, but yeah, this guy comes out with some outlandish, dumb reviews. I think his latest one is he did a Red Dead review, which was just awful. I mean, he just nitpicking at it, you know, and just hating on the game, which is an outstanding game. I might make a review myself, probably not. But still, you know, this guy is just a clown. He's a joke. But nonetheless, I called him up and I was like, listen, man, you're talking all this smack on YouTube. You're making videos that no one can see. Why don't you come to my channel, you know, a professional channel like me, Bizwax, and let's sit down and hash out a, a, an honest review of some movies. Huh? So that's what we're going to probably end up doing. Hopefully he doesn't cancel on me, you know. Because, I mean, I, I will be posting the videos. Unlike him where he's just making private videos and we can't see them. Because it's just pointless. And hopefully this guy doesn't flake out on me, you know. So I'll just look out for my next video. It might be with Freddy's reviews. Probably not, though. And uh, if you can't see the video, just know it probably got recorded. And he didn't want to post it. So I'll see you guys on the next video.